Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything, Medicare Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode and another rendition of the Everything Medicare Podcast. This is episode 109, where every single week we bring you three episodes of a podcast where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with your golden age called retirement. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, We are one day away from the Medicare open enrollment period, but as I've said in episodes leading up to until this point, today is um, October 14th. Tomorrow is the first day, technically speaking, of open enrollment. But for me, and I know for a lot of people in our industry that deal with Medicare, open enrollment really does start for a lot of people October 1st, and for some of us, probably even in September, depending on that specific person's situation because the benefits and changes for Medicare open enrollment period are made public on the 1st of October for the upcoming year. And so that's when we can officially start answering specific questions about specific plans for clients of ours. And um, we can actually have access to everything available to us. We have um, access to the new formularies, new networks on the Medicare Advantage plans, Um, the formularies on the prescription drug plans, and it's incredibly busy. The first week of October, folks, I worked 100 hours or more. This week, I'll have worked, I believe I probably did 100 hours last week, excuse me, last week, which was the second week of October. And this week, I'll probably be doing close to that, if not slightly under, if not maybe a little more, depending on how the week goes. We're incredibly busy. I am tired as hell. I am so um, exhausted. I have my coffee, and that's the only reason why I can do this episode for you today. That's why I'm not boring as can be today on this Monday. Monday is the start of the week, and I'm already exhausted because of all the time we put in. It's not even October 15th yet. So be patient with me on this, but I need my coffee. Without my coffee... I am nothing. I am useless. I'm dead energy. But I can provide you energy and just be sharp for you because of my coffee. It keeps me going. It's already it's Monday morning as I talk to you about this, and I'm already exhausted because I've been working seven days a week. Mm. (sighs) Like I said, without my coffee, I'm not able to do this episode for you. So, Thank you so much for listening, folks. I hope you've had a great October so far. I hope um, if you celebrate Halloween, if you like to do trick-or-treating with grandkids, or, you know, if you have any Halloween festivities going on throughout this month, fall, um, seeing leaves change, if you live in a state that the leaves change, um, I hope that you're enjoying your October so far. So far, during this enrollment period, I can say that there are things that I've observed that, in my opinion, people need to look for when they're making a decision when it comes to changing a plan. And there's also things that people need to watch out for when it comes to making a decision about changing your plan or sticking with your plan or needing to revisit your plan or whatever your situation might be. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare Part D prescription drug plan, the open enrollment season, the annual election period, AEP, October 15th, through December 7th is the time period for you to do that, but it's kind of an art form to know if you should stay where you're at or should you know to try something differently, and the only way to know that is to really understand what to look for, first of all, but also what to avoid, and this episode is some things that I've observed since the 1st of October that you need to personally, in my opinion, watch out for, and there's a lot of people 
that don't quite understand their Medicare. There's a lot of people that don't understand what their choices are with their Medicare. Ah, more coffee. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't understand what your choices are, if you don't understand the good, the bad, the ugly, how something works specifically, you really can't make an informed decision. Lots of people in this industry, and I've talked about this, I've kind of been beating a dead horse with this topic, but a lot of people in this industry, I've heard them say, you know, that people on Medicare don't want to be experts on Medicare. And sure, you don't want to have to be a world-renowned expert, but you at least need to understand how your coverage works and what you're, what you're getting what you're not getting by making a particular decision. I think that that um, line of thinking, you know, people don't want to be experts on Medicare. People on Medicare don't want to be experts on Medicare is commonly used as a crutch, as an excuse to not provide quality information to people, to tell them the bare minimum, to tell them a couple sales pitches about something or maybe some one or two key highlights about a certain product or, or insurance company to get you to sign up for that particular product or insurance company without you really understanding the good, the bad, the ugly, the pitfalls because every single thing you can possibly do in the Medicare industry has good and bad to it. There's pitfalls with everything. There's no perfect solution. There's no perfect way of going. There's just different ways that can work best for you and the negatives don't impact you as much as the positives impact you. Everybody has their own needs and preferences. And that's why you need to understand what your choices are. You need to understand what to look for, number one, but what to avoid, number two. And this episode is about three things that I believe that you need to watch out for, not, not particularly this open enrollment period, but probably all year long, number one but primarily during the open enrollment period for years to come. I don't see any of these three things going away anytime soon. And they're things that I believe put you in a bad situation and don't help you out at all. Okay, But they're things that most people that listen to this will probably deal with at least one of them, if not all three of them, at some point in their Medicare journey. So what are these three things? Well, uh, excuse me, more coffee. I need it, folks. I need it. I can't provide you this show without coffee during this time of the year. It's insanity. It's a circus over here at this office. Okay? Everybody in here is working like crazy, working like a dog. But it's okay. We love it. You know, if this was, if we were a tax office, this would be our tax season. But it's it's really crazy. It's really busy. I need my coffee. I just, I need it. And I tried out this um, this Starbucks um, cold brew with um, some, I think it's some, some pumpkin spice foam over the top. It's really, really good, but it's got a lot of caffeine in it. Um, I don't particularly buy Starbucks coffees like that all the time because I just think, you know, Five, six, seven dollars for a cup of coffee is madness when I can make a cup of coffee and probably spend five to ten cents on it, you know, on my own. But, you know, just buying my own coffee. But this time of the year, I need the good stuff. I need the good stuff to keep me going. So I probably buy more Starbucks coffee during Medicare open enrollment than any other time of the year. So, folks. What are these three things that you need to watch out for? Well, they are situations that insurance companies, insurance agents and brokers, and the insurance industry as a whole put, likes to put you in a situation or in a box primarily to, to, to kind of paint a picture for you, create a narrative that you need something that you might not need or to paint a picture that you're actually being provided a service when in reality you're being taken advantage of in a lot of ways, you could argue. And we're going to talk about that after we take a quick break going into segment two and after a quick word from this week's sponsor, Randy W. Hall, the Mr. Nice Guy Medicare Advisor. Don't go anywhere. I'll tell you what my three things are after we take a break. Stay with me.
What's up, everybody? This is actually Randy W. Hall, Mr. Nice Guy Medicare Advisor, not Christian Brendel, your esteemed host. I'm here to tell you about my Medicare agency, Mr. Nice Guy Medicare Advisor, based here in Tennessee. For the past 10 years, I've been helping Medicare beneficiaries just like you in Tennessee and Kentucky maximize their Medicare. If you're a regular listener of this podcast, you know Christian always encourages you to deal with a broker in your state who sells all the different plans and will give you not just a quote, but also advise you and educate you in a way that is simple to understand. We know how confusing and overwhelming the whole process can be. We do it all for folks on Medicare, from supplements to Advantage plans, Part D, cancer products, hospital indemnities, and more. So if you want to get a free quote or a consultation, I urge you to call 615-578-5174. Again, that's area code 615-578-5174. Or for more information, you can visit my website and read all about me at MrNiceGuyMedicareAdvisor.com. That's all one word, MrNiceGuyMedicareAdvisor.com. And again, why deal with a jerk? When you can deal with a nice guy. Ah, welcome back, everybody, to episode 109 of the Everything Medicare podcast, and this is our second segment of this episode. Thank you for that message from Randy W. Hall. Let's get back into the three things that I believe you need to watch out for this Medicare open enrollment period, but not just this Medicare open enrollment period all Medicare open enrollment periods from now going forward as long as these three things continue to be a topic of interest and a conversation that we need to have. Things that take place. Number one, and I've done entire episodes about this before, but I don't think it's a bad idea to necessarily pass on a reminder. There's something in this industry that needs to be talked about more than it does. I probably talk about it a little too much, but this time of the year, I have to remind you about it, and that's that there's there's good agents and bad agents. So let's talk about that for a second. What separates a good agent from a bad agent? And we could talk about this until we're, until all of us are just blue in the face, until I'm talking to you and you're listening to what I have to say, and we can just be blue in the face. But I think a main thing that separates a good agent from a bad agent is experience. An agent could have the best intentions. An agent can have... Um, you know, a good heart, they're honest, um, they want to do right by you as well as themselves, you know. In the me in the insurance industry in general, it's supposed to be an equal trade-off. Like for my clients, I always tell them, you know, I don't care what policy you have through me as long as you have it through me and you're happy with it and it, and it suits your needs. I'm not in the business of recommending something solely on how it benefits me and my company. I want you to benefit from working with us just as much as not, if not more, as we do from, you know, earning your business and working with you as a, as a client and a customer of ours. That's always been our mantra. That's always been our model um, from the very beginning. So an agent can have the best intention. An agent can want that for you. An agent can actually have, you know, fully intentioned, fully intended to, to help you and actually provide a good service for you. Not all the agents out there are crooks and snakes and everything like that. Don't get me wrong, those ones exist. But there's a lot of good-hearted agents out there. But a good-hearted agent that doesn't have the knowledge and experience to help you is still dangerous because ignorance is something that is just as dangerous as deceit in my personal opinion, when it comes to the insurance industry and particularly Medicare. Medicare being a highly complicated topic for most people. Medicare being something that 95 out of 100 people in America say they don't know hardly anything about. Medicare being completely ran and overseen by the government. So you know just by me saying that how complicated it can be. I've always said for years, you don't want to work with an agent in a booth. During open enrollment particularly, you're going to see agents in booths at Walmarts, um, Kroger stores, Walgreens. If you live, um, if you live more in, in the south, southeast 
um, type of the parts of the country, you might see them in public stores or Winn-Dixie's or something like that. Um, CVS pharmacies, you'll see them in all different kinds of stores. You'll see them at tables. Now, this isn't the case with every agent that sits at a table or a booth, but what I'm particularly talking about is the ones you see in retail grocery stores. I'm not talking about the ones you see in fairs because that's typically just a one-time day event. People can actually have the time to do that. The reason why I say that is because the agents that you see that sit in these booths are 99 times out of 100 brand new to the business. And how do I know that? Well, when an agent is brand new to the business, they have all kinds of times on time on their hands. When an agent makes a commitment to work in a booth for open enrollment period, they have to typically commit to a certain amount of hours per week, a minimum amount of hours. Usually it's probably 10 to 20 hours minimum. Um, and sometimes they can commit to as much as 40 or more hours a week. It's not something where they can just show up as they please. And they actually have to register these hours with Medicare, with CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And at times, CMS will send secret shoppers. Medicare will send secret shoppers to make sure they're at these booths. And so they have to be there. It's a commitment. And usually they'll be there for hours of the day. How do I know this? Because I did it myself when I was new to the business. And I've worked with agents, and I've seen agents that's worked with us, our company, and our organization over the years. And that's typically how they get their foot in the door. They don't have a pipeline built up. A pipeline meaning people they've talked to over the years, interested parties that um, they can sit down and talk to, people that are possibly interested in their services, potential clients, potential customers. They don't have that. They don't. No one knows who they are. They don't have a brand. They don't have any credibility. They're new to the business. And so the best way for them to get in front of potential clients and customers, and I don't, I don't begrudge anybody for, for trying to you know, build up a client base, especially if they do it the right way and they're actually helping people by doing so. But the, only, the best way for them to do that is to sit at a booth where people walk by and might approach their table or booth with some questions. You might see them sitting at a booth for one particular insurance company that they've agreed to talk about and only that company while they're there. They might be at a booth or a table that allows them to talk to you about multiple different companies at a time. It really just depends. But the reason why I know that these agents are new is because no agent with an established clientele has the time to commit 20 to 50 hours a week sitting at a booth waiting for someone to come talk to them. I don't have time for that. I'm established. I have a clientele. I have a business that I need to run. I have tremendous amounts of commitment that I have to my business. Um, I run, I host this podcast, a nationally broadcast Medicare podcast. There's no way in hell I have time to sit at a booth in a grocery store 20 to 50 hours a week. The only people that have time to do that are people that don't have any clients to take care of. They're brand new to the business. They have nothing better to do. Think about it. Think about it. These people don't have anything better to do. They don't have any clients. They don't have any customers that they've worked with. They have no time commitments. So, the best use of their time is to try to get in front of people to build that customer base. I don't begrudge them for doing it. I understand why they do it. But for you as the consumer, you have to take this into consideration. I've always said that at least three years of experience you should want to see from your Medicare agent. At least. But the more the better. The more the better. And you want to avoid people that just don't have the experience. Agents and booths, 99 times out of 100, don't have the experience because experienced brokers that have clients they're taking care of and businesses to run don't have time to sit in booths for that amount of commitment that Medicare requires them to put forward to sit in a booth. So avoid these people because you know you're working with someone that's brand new. They might have the best intentions in mind, 
but they don't know half of what you'll, you'll want them to know to give you the 100% credible, proper advice to advise you on your Medicare. My opinion. That's number one. Avoid agents and boosts because you know that they're new most times. Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100 even. Number two, I would say um, commercials that particularly advertise $0 premium plans. We've all seen them. We've all seen them. There's actually maybe two, if not three, um, Medicare companies that advertise like crazy during open enrollment. There's one in particular that starts with an H. I'm not going to say anything more than that. And they actually will take out an hour of time on particular television networks to, to, to do a whole Medicare show for an hour. I didn't think anyone could do that, but me! People ask me, how do you come up with stuff three times a week for three episodes? It's because there's always something to talk about. Medicare is ever-changing. Medicare has so much to, to working parts and things that you have to know about it. It's easy for me. It's easy. But... When you see these commercials, these advertisements, maybe it's an ad, maybe it's a flyer you get in the mail, maybe it's a a flyer you see at the grocery store, maybe something on a bulletin board somewhere at the library, maybe it's a TV commercial that says zero dollar premium plan, and everybody just looks happy. There's no care in the world. Their teeth are perfectly white. There are no wrinkles on their face. They're skipping through flowers. Everything looks great. But. Zero dollar premium is only one factor of it. Now, they're, they're, those ads are for Medicare Advantage plans. We know this. If you listen to me for some time, you know this already. They're for Medicare Advantage plans. You may already have one. And if you have one, I would like to think that you've looked at both sides of the coin because I've always said you can go Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement, and that can better determine... Um, if you understand both sides of the coin, the good, the bad, the ugly, then you can make a better decision for what's better for you. If a Medicare Advantage plan is better for you, then great. But if you have a Medicare supplement, and let's say you're paying $100 a month or more in premium, depending on where you live, and you see a premium, and you see an advertisement on TV for a Medicare plan that's no premium, it's kind of enticing. But you have to understand, if you have a Medicare supplement, when you go to a Medicare Advantage plan, and for, like I said, for a lot of people, Medicare Advantage plans work great. But you, when you go from a Medicare supplement to a Medicare Advantage plan, what you're giving up is the freedom to see any doctor you like that takes Medicare in the country. You're, ba you're, being, you're binding yourself to a network, and you're going from a situation where you have full medical coverage, if not very close to it, to a situation where you have co-pays for everything. And if someone has a lot of health conditions, a lot of problems, they're using their plan quite a bit, that could be detrimental, all because they wanted a quote-unquote zero dollar premium plan so don't just dive into a commercial because you see a an advertisement for no premium plan make sure you understand what comes with it understand that it's an advertisement for medicare advantage plan and if you have a medicare supplement the limitations that might come with it that you don't have now could be great now if you already have a medicare advantage plan and you know how it works you know how the supplements work and it works well for you that's great there's a place for Medicare Advantage plans, and depending on where you live and depending on what's available in your market, it could be the best available thing for you. I'm not discouraging that you, anyone to go with a Medicare Advantage plan, but make sure you understand what the advertisement's talking about. Everything has good and bad to it, including $0 premium Medicare Advantage plans. Stay with me, folks. Let's take a break. After a quick word from this week's sponsor, I'll come back in segment three, and I'll give you my number three thing to watch for this Medicare open enrollment period. Don't go anywhere! Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to our third and final segment of this week's Everything Medicare podcast. All right, so let's talk about the third and final thing, in my opinion, you need to watch out for this enrollment period and every enrollment period going forward as long as these things are taking place, which I don't foresee any of these three things going away anytime soon because they've proven to be incredibly profitable for the insurance companies 
because in a lot of cases, not all the time, but in a lot of cases, they actually end up being traps for people that don't understand what they're getting themselves into. Okay. So number three, it would be people that have Medicare supplement plans and they have a Part D drug plan that it goes with their supplement. Remember, when you have a Medicare supplement, Medicare A Part A and Part B acts as your primary insurance. A Medicare supplement acts as your secondary insurance. Between the two, you have full medical coverage, if not very close to full medical coverage, but it doesn't cover prescriptions, Part D drugs, so you have to pick up a Medicare Part D plan from a private insurance company to go with it. So a lot of big insurance companies, national insurance companies, there's one in particular that I'm thinking of that I won't say their name because I'll get in trouble. But they target people that buy their Medicare Part D prescription drug plans. And then they call you out of the blue to try to sell you and move you over to one of their Medicare Advantage plans instead. They contact you trying to convince you to do this. And the way they get your information is because you buy their Part D drug plan. You're a customer of theirs with a drug plan. Now, an insurance company makes um, an incredibly, m incredibly larger amount of money on a Medicare Advantage plan than they do a Part D drug plan. So in their eyes, they're, they have you on a product of theirs where they make some money but not a tremendous amount. And they're trying to move you from a product where they don't make a whole lot of money to a product where they make a tremendous amount of money. I read an article the other day that said, um, as of this year, Medicare Advantage companies make on average over $11,000 per person in government funding. Think about that. $11,000 per person. You do the math. So insurance, in, in, Medicare insurance companies all want you to be on a Medicare Advantage program if, if they had the choice. So what they do is they heavily start to market their own existing customers on plans they don't make as much money on, products like drug plans. They try to push you heavily into a Medicare Advantage plan. I've seen it happen. It's happened to my own clients with insurance companies here in Utah and other states that we work in. If you have a Medicare supplement plan and you looked at Medicare Advantage as well as Medicare supplement when you got onto it, you looked at both sides of the coin Please keep in mind that it is very apparent that you remember why you picked up the Medicare supplement plan. And watch for this. Just remember what they're trying to do. They're not trying to help you out. They're trying to make more money for themselves. Now, maybe a Medicare Advantage plan is good for you. Maybe it's a better thing for you personally than a Medicare supplement. And that's a different conversation to have. But if you need a Medicare supplement or that's where your preferences and needs are met best, do not let your Part D drug plan insurance company push you into something that's not good for you. And they will try. A lot of them will try. So, to ref so as a reminder, my three things to watch for this Medicare enrollment period are agents and booths, told you why, $0 premium commercials and advertisements, which are Medicare Advantage plans, Part D, your, your Medicare Part D insurance company, if you have a Medicare supplement, pushing you heavily to switch to their Medicare Advantage plan. Watch out for these things. Be aware of them, and you can make better decisions. Thank you so much for listening, folks, to this episode of the Everything Medicare podcast. As always, if you live in the states of Utah, Texas, Florida, Idaho, and Oregon, again, that is Utah, Texas, Florida, Idaho, and Oregon, I'd love to be able to talk with you. That's where me and my company are licensed to work with people. We're licensed as insurance brokers and um, advisors, if you will, and experts on Medicare to work with people. We're, we partner with all of the largest insurance companies in the industry, and it would be our pleasure to be able to touch base with you, see if we can possibly recommend something better to you. Our office number is 801-255-5340. 801 5340. I would love to talk with you and see what maybe we could do to help you. Thank you so much, folks. If you're listening to us on a platform that allows you to leave us a review, please don't hesitate to do so. It helps us tremendously on um, reaching more people just like you and providing education. Talk soon.